It was about 6.45 in the morning. My daughter was eating breakfast at our counter. She looked up and she said, Daddy, look, there's a pillar of smoke. And I looked off and sure enough, in the distance, there was a smoke cloud. As I was looking out, it just kept getting darker and darker. There were no clouds, but there was smoke everywhere. Ash was starting to fall all around me. Uh, we never dreamed that uh, a fire of this magnitude would have cut through our town and destroy it. But uh, six months living in paradise and then the fire happens. It was surrounded by fo forested with the trees and uh, that was the fuel for the fire that probably led to uh, the, the home's destruction. And I went from thinking, okay, maybe we're going to leave to we're getting out of here right now. As we were leaving, we noticed that a spot fire had flared up right next to our house. In the moment, we realized that probably is going to take our house. I had a friend that works for pg and &E, and he was up there, and he got a picture, and he sent it to us, and, and then we knew that it was totally destroyed. There's nothing left. The fire did, in fact, blow through the entire town. 153,000 square miles, 14,000 uh, homes, and uh, 85 people lost their lives. I'm standing here next to the remains of our house in paradise. Our neighbor right next door to us, brand new build, his house is still standing, and our neighbor on the other side of us, his house is still standing. The amazing thing that I noticed when I came up, our neighborhood, every single house in our immediate neighborhood is still standing, except for ours. I still believe that Jesus has complete authority over everything, and I still believe that this is for the Father's glory. We moved to Paradise, California four months before the fire hit. We were very excited because it was a community that was extremely diverse. You had very young families with people that were well into their retirement years. The Sunday before this happened, we had one of our largest Sundays giving-wise and attendance-wise that the church had had in its most recent history. Everything felt like this is heading in the right direction. I still believe it is, but it's a different direction than I was anticipating. Well, last summer when I heard about the car fire, um, you know, uh, I wanted to volunteer and I've been associated with Samaritan's Purse through Operation Christmas Child for 15 years and just, uh, it never worked out. And then this summer when the car fire happened in Reading, which is, you know, just right up the road, um, I decided to finally do that and, uh, and really just enjoyed helping people who had gone through, you know, tragedy. Samaritan's Purse, you know, not only uh, provides the physical help, but the spiritual help as well. And, and uh, I saw how, uh, how beneficial it was. I told my wife and kids, get to Sacramento as quick as you can. We had family that were there. I decided to stay here at the evacuation center to just encourage people, do whatever I could to help my community, literally just to be the hands and feet of Jesus because this was the community that I was called to serve, the people I was called to love on, and I knew I couldn't just leave. Even through this devastation, he can draw people to himself. Even people who aren't Christians, uh, they appreciate having uh, other people around them who care and uh, who are going to help them physically with uh, sifting for their valuables. But beyond that, on the job site, every single time, there's a connection that God does through the group with the people, and uh, I've seen that over and over. God had placed us in this scenario for such a time as this. Have the opportunity to literally rebuild a community on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think the visual representation of where I am standing even right now, directly across from the church, is a place where there is devastation, there's no hope, discouragement and fear, and then right across the road is what I believe is the source of hope, faith, strength, and perseverance. It's going to be a rebuilding time, and uh, Samaritan's Purse is going to be on the forefront of that. There's the practical, physical part that has to be done, and there's also the spiritual part. I just want to be a part of that uh, right away, because that's the hope for paradise. Samaritan's Purse is there helping make this happen. As a pastor, I can't thank them enough for their willingness to see the vision and really be there for the community to understand the love of Jesus. 
in a spiritual sense, but also in a practical sense. It reminds me that we're not alone, but God is in the middle of all of this with us as we're seeing organizations like Samaritan's Purse come alongside of us and love this community well as we see God bring us back from the ashes.